Hi, and welcome to another DroPros video. This segment is the second of a four-part series describing the incredibly powerful EL700 Color LCD Digital Readout. In this video segment, we describe how to quickly set up and operate the EL700. Now, please keep in mind that this video is designed to get you up and running very quickly and only explains a couple of the most basic functions. For a much more detailed explanation of everything this display is capable of, please see the other videos in this series. All right, so let's begin our second video of the EL700. Now, as we power up the display, the first image that we see is the startup screen. And in the lower right, we can see the software version number, and on the lower left, we can see the language options. All right, so to continue to the main screen, I'll go ahead and tap the yellow arrow button underneath where it reads English. So here's the main screen that we would normally see in our day-to-day -day operations. And this brings us to our first lesson in using the EL700. The yellow arrows that surround the LCD panel are called soft keys. These are the buttons that you select to make things happen on the display. But they're really not buttons, they're just another part of the touch sensitive screen. So you only need to tap them instead of pushing them. Now the advantage of this style of screen is that it's completely sealed against contaminants. So if you touch it with dirty or greasy hands, you can just wipe it down later. Now another part of the display that you'll be working with quite a bit is a row of blue buttons along the bottom of the screen, right along here. Now these buttons are context sensitive, meaning that what they do will constantly change based on whichever function or menu you happen to be in. Because of this, they're called soft keys, since their value or function never remains the same. Now just remember, you don't push or select the blue buttons, you touch the yellow arrow keys underneath them to select whichever particular value or function you want to perform. Now the other buttons we see on the front panel are mostly hard keys, meaning that they only perform a dedicated or single task. For example, all of the numbers on the keypad are hard keys, and the very bottom row of buttons along the bottom of the display here are also hard keys, meaning that they're dedicated to a specific function and never change. And finally, the question mark button on the lower right hand side of the display is considered a soft key. It accesses the help menu. But because it's a soft key, this makes it extremely powerful. Basically, the help menu knows what phase or function of the display that you're working in. Let's say that you're creating an arc in the arc function. If you need some help and push the help button, it would automatically open the help menu to the arc function chapter. Now here are a couple of hints that will make working with your EL700 much simpler. The first trick is that if you can't find what you're looking for, it's probably on a different page. So to illustrate that concept, let's take a closer look at the display. We're currently on the home or the main screen, but if we look to the right just above our blue function buttons, we can see a small arrow pointing over to the right, right here. Now what that means is that there are more function buttons on the next page or over to the right just out of view. So to get there, all we need to do is to push or touch the right arrow button like this. So now we can see the rest of the blue function buttons that didn't have enough space on the first screen to show up. The first button accesses the calculator function, and the second button, or the one with the picture of a hammer and a wrench, starts a setup menu. If we again look above our row of blue buttons, we now have an arrow pointing over to the left, meaning we have more function buttons available to us if we arrow back to the left. Now there are a lot of options and functions that you can program in the setup menu to make your machining a whole lot easier. And I should also mention that once you change something, it stays there permanently, even if you turn the display off. In other words, you only need to make these changes once and they'll stay in the Dero's memory forever. All right, 
So to enter the setup menu, simply tap the yellow arrow button below the blue setup button. And now we have a choice of either user setup or factory setup. We want to access the user setup menu and that selection is already highlighted, so we'll push the select button. And right away we can see the beginning of a whole list of different options. To navigate this screen, you simply arrow up or down to select whichever option you want to take a look at. But let's say that we wanted to change the settings for x-axis scale. All we'd need to do is simply arrow down to where it says select axis. All we need to do now is to select the X button along the bottom row. And here we are in the X axis settings menu and right away we can see three of the most popular settings we might need to change. Scale resolution, display resolution, and axis direction. Let's arrow down to scale resolution. With scale resolution, it's very important that this setting exactly matches the resolution of the scales. For mill kits, they currently all have 5 micron scales, so we need to make sure that this setting is set to exactly 5 microns. But notice that I don't even see a 5 micron option along the bottom row. Now, just as we said before, when you can't find something that you're looking for, it's probably on another page. And sure enough, right above the bottom row of blue buttons, we can see a red arrow pointing to the right, reminding us that there's another page of options just to the right. And sure enough, when I select the right arrow key, I see the option I was looking for, which in this case was 5 microns. The next parameter is display resolution. This controls the resolution that we see on the display. The rule to remember is that the value you choose for display resolution must be equal to or higher than the actual scale resolution. So in this case, with 5 micron scales, the smallest value I can choose is 5 microns, which will give me the best resolution possible. But let's say we're just doing some rough work. So if we wanted to, we could choose any display resolution value above 5 microns. The next parameter down is axis direction. Currently the value reads right and I can see that along the bottom row of blue buttons I can choose either left or right. And this is where you can change the scale direction or in other words which way the scale counts more positive and which way the scale counts more negative. Now just remember the setting here is completely arbitrary. Simply put if your scale isn't counting positive or negative in the direction that you want simply come to this parameter and change it to the opposite value, whichever that may be. And finally at the bottom of our x-axis setting menu we can choose to either save and exit or exit without saving. We'll go ahead and choose the save and exit option. And this brings us right back to our original user setup mode. Now, if we needed to change any of our other skills parameters, we could do that right now by simply selecting the other axes. But I think we're good to go, so let's arrow down to save and exit, and then select the save and exit blue button. All right, so here we are back in our normal home screen. So at this point, let's do a very quick overview of our blue function buttons along the bottom of our display. Now the first button is the function button, and if we select it, we can see that there's a whole bunch of different options to choose from. Again, for a more detailed explanation, check out our other videos. But to give you a brief idea of how this works, let's quickly cover the first function, bold hole circle. To start the bold hole circle function, you need to write down or tell the display exactly what you want. So to do that, you select the sheet of paper. The center coordinates determine the offset of the center of the circle, which will set 0.4 and 0.6 inches.
we'll set the radius to one inch. The starting angle to 45 degrees. And the number of holes to 12. And then to launch the function, we press the return key on the far left of the blue buttons. So here we are, and now we have a complete picture of the bowl hole circle that we just programmed. Now the black crosshairs show our absolute or zero point, the red dot is our current position, and the green dot is the first point along the circle. Note how the angle to the green dot is set at 45 degrees, which is exactly what we just programmed. And in the X and Y window at the top right is the distance that we need to move the mill to get to our first point. So to get to that first point, you simply move your mill until the X and Y values zero out, like this. And as we're moving our table, note how the red dot moves, telling me in real time where my cutter or mill is at the entire time. Now, how's that for situational awareness? All right, so now we're at our first point because both the X and Y windows are both zeroed out. Now, to advance to the next hole, we simply push the right arrow button. And note how the green dot moved to the next hole and the top of the display now reads hole number two of 12. To sequentially move to the next hole, we simply keep pushing the right arrow key, but if we want to immediately jump to another hole out of order, we simply push the proceed to end button and then we enter the desired hole number. We'll use six followed by the enter key. And again, note how the green dot moved or jumped to hole number six and the top of the display now reads hole number six of 12. Okay, so let's say that we wanted to save this function in order to exactly duplicate the same part at a later date. In other words, we want to save the programming steps that we just took the time to set up. So just like a business plan, we need to save our work into a folder. So I'll push the folder icon. And along the bottom row of blue buttons, we see a computer disk. So to save the function that we just programmed, press the computer disk button. And now we can name it anything that we want to include upper or lower case letters and even numbers. Let's be super original and call it Demo1. So we'll highlight the letters and numbers that we want to use and then push the enter button for each character. And when we're ready to save the name, we'll push the computer disk button. So now we're back to the bolt hole circle setup screen, but the difference is that the part is now called demo one, as we can see at the top of the screen. All right, so let's exit the function now by selecting the door or the exit prompt. The next blue button along the bottom row controls the quick zero function. This function allows us to quickly zero out any axis. When we press it, we can see that all of our axis windows now have a zero displayed next to them. Now if we press any of the axis window buttons over on the right, the axis resets or zeroes out in one quick easy step, like this. Note that this completes on any axis with a single button push with the axis now reading 0, 0.0000. Now if we push set, the windows go back to normal. But now if we press an axis key, instead of it zeroing out to four decimal places, the axis window has a single zero. This means that it's waiting for me to enter a value. Let's go ahead and enter four, followed by the enter key. 
So now we can see that the display window has accepted my entry of four. I know that it's complete because the window now has four decimal places, the same as the other access windows. Now the next blue button over is used for setting up the touch probe. But before we select it, let's take a look at the top of the screen. We can see here that there's a touch probe icon, but there are only dashes next to it, meaning that a touch probe has never been turned on or set up. All right, so let's go ahead and set that up by selecting the Set Probe blue button. So to start with, I'll choose the Setup sheet like before. And now I can name my touch probe anything that I want. So in the spirit of being original, we'll call it T1. And now to save it, I'll touch the computer disk. Now on the Touch Probe Tool Setup screen, none of the data here is truly essential to enter. Basically, this tool setup screen would only be used if you had multiple touch probes and you needed to differentiate between them all. For us, we only have one single touch probe, so we'll go ahead and exit the Touch Probe Tool Setup screen by selecting the Exit or the Door Prompt. So now with my touch probe setup complete, I'll exit, but I want to make sure to select the touch probe on slash exit button. So now at the top of my screen, I can see the touch probe icon has changed to touch probe 01. Now it's important to point out that the last few steps that we just accomplished only need to be accomplished once and the display remembers the touch probe forever. All right. So now I want to use the touch probe, so to do that, I'll touch the touch probe function button on the far right of my blue buttons. And here I have all the touch probe functions to choose from. From left to right, they are datum capture, distance measurement, angle measurement, center of circle, and finally I have a button to allow us to specify the diameter for a touch probe tip. Let's go ahead and set that up now since we need to account for the diameter of the tip on our touch probe in order to get an accurate distance measurement. So in order to do that, I'll go ahead and push the probe tip diameter button and then enter the diameter of my probe tip, which is 0.118 inches, followed by the enter key. All right, so now I can start using my touch probe. Let's start by using our touch probe to tram a vise that I've just installed on our mill. Now, when you mount a vise to the table, you want to make sure that the jaws of the vise are parallel to the travel of the machine. And that's a very easy task if we use the single angle function of our touch probe. So I'll begin by selecting the touch probe angle function. And on this screen, I can choose between either dual or single angles. Now for tramming my vise, I only need to measure a single angle, so let's choose the single angle button in the middle of the buttons. And now on the top right of the display, it's prompting me to choose between either X or the Y axis. I want to tram the vise along the X axis, so we'll choose the X axis. And now I can see graphically of exactly what I need to do. The display is telling me to move to position 1 or on the left side of the vise. So I'll move my mill so that the touch probe is on and touches the very far left side of the jaws of the vise. And then I'll move the touch probe in to touch the jaw of the vise, all the while listening for the beep. And now the display is telling me to go to position 2, or along the far right side of the vise. Again, I'll move the touch probe in to touch the right side of the jaw, all the while listening for the beep. All 
Okay, so now the display is telling me that my vise is at an angle of 179 degrees, 48 minutes, and 10 seconds. And now I know exactly how parallel my vise really is or is not in this case. And I can repeat this process as needed until I get my vise in perfect alignment. All right, so let's take another look at a different touch probe function. I've removed my vise and I've replaced it with a part that has a trough or channel running down the middle of it. Let's measure the inside width of the channel. We'll first select the probe distance function and then select the inside measurement button. And the display now prompts us to select which axis we want to measure. We want to measure the inside diameter on the y-axis, so we'll select the y-axis window. And the display now prompts us to move to the start position, so we'll touch the back of the inside channel, all the while listening for the beep. Next, the display prompts us to move to the end position, so we'll touch the front of the channel. And immediately the display tells us that the channel is 0.8483 inches wide. Now to escape out of the touch probe mode, we'll select the exit doors. So here we are back at the home screen. So let's see how we can make the display read in either inches or millimeters. If we look at the top of the display, we can see that we're currently in inch mode. But if we look at the bottom row of buttons, we can push the inch millimeter button. And now if we look at the top of the display, we can see that it now reads millimeters. Now the other way to tell if the display is currently reading in millimeters is that all of the displays now have three decimal points instead of four. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to inch mode. And now all of the axes are reading to four decimal places and also the top of the display reads inch. Well that wraps up the second of our four part video series on the EL700 color LCD display. Remember, this video is only designed to get you up and running very quickly. For much more detailed explanation of all the other functions and features, please make sure and check out our other videos in this series. All right, so for now, I've shown you how to quickly set up and start using the EL700. It's easy to use, I've shown you how to do it, and now you can do it too.